Good morning and welcome to News Watch Today. Filling in for Cameron, I'm Lilia Parks. And I'm Austin Mickey. The world's ocean surface temperature has broken records every day for more than a year. And new information arises involving the Biden impeachment move. Aubrey Jackson is here with your forecast and Titus Smith has your latest sports news. This is News Watch Today. Welcome back, Lilia. I'll just start by saying that the weather we had over spring break last week was pretty great. Yeah, it's been really nice weather. And earlier this week, Aubrey, can you tell us more about that weather to come? Well, Austin, Lilia, let's take a look at what the first week of spring will bring us. Our current conditions are sunny and 47 degrees. It is slightly chilly outside with those winds that have risen to 13 miles an hour moving southeast, but the humidity has dropped significantly down to 50%. The forecast for today for Thursday is partly cloudy with the high of 66, and the winds are going to stay about the same. It's going to be pretty nice and even today, so a nice introduction to spring. That's it for now. We'll see more of that in my full forecast. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Aubrey. You know, Austin, it looks like we're in some for a pretty nice day today. I know, it sounds like it'll be pretty great. Yeah. And I guess we'll know more in just a little while during Aubrey's full forecast. More than 160 Evangel University students, faculty, and staff have or will participate in service trips to a variety of locations throughout the spring 2024 and summer semesters. Of the 19 experiences sponsored by Evangel's Global Cultures and Compassion Program, four are domestic and 15 are international. Service and learning trips are a core component to the Evangel academic experience. Four of the international trips took place this past week over Evangel spring break. Ten students participated in a six-team women's flag football tournament in Spain, and these students will also volunteer in different areas at the International Church of Barcelona. A group of nine Evangel students are partnering with the Malaga International Church to prepare a new church building for the English-speaking community there. Four students are working and training alongside refugees to receive a new certification, which will allow the refugees to secure future employment in the coffee industry, where their families will eventually settle. And 17 members of Heartsong EU's traveling worship team are performing in 10 services during an eight-day period in Rome and outlying areas. As part of this experience, students will also serve in an outreach event and provide educational assistance and worship workshops and coaching sessions. With the semester just past half over, the Evangel community looks to wrap up the 2024 trips within the school year. On Sunday, dozens of U.S. citizens were evacuated from Haiti on a State Department charter flight. The U.S. State Department is exploring more evacuation options, as many others are still waiting to be rescued in the hopes of escaping increased gang violence. The political instability in Haiti has caused a shortage of necessities such as food and gas and has left bustling streets completely vacant. A Florida-based nonprofit called Project Dynamo has been working to rescue Americans and has claimed that over 100 people have requested help to evacuate the country. These evacuations are the result of gang violence intensifying earlier this month, along with other coalitions that have worked to wreak coordinated havoc in Haiti. House Democrats have selected a former associate of the Rudy Giuliani to be, uh, to be their witness in an impeachment hearing for the President Biden. The House Oversight Committee is set to meet Wednesday, and Democratic lawmakers have invested Lev Par Parnas to testify. Parnas, a Ukrainian-American, has been convicted of campaign finance violations and lying to federal officials about it. However, he has also worked with Giuliani on behalf of Trump and to try to unearth dirt on Biden's dealings with Ukraine leading up to the 2020 race. Last year, Parnas discredited a number of theories by Republicans against Biden. Representative Jamie Raskin of Maryland, the top Democrat on the oversight panel, says Parnas can explain why Republicans believe the bogus claims. Raskin believes Parnas can debunk the false accusations that are at the heart of the impeachment investigation. New home construction has surged over the last month, so if you're looking to purchase one, now might be the right time. Buying a house now might be easier and less expensive than in previous months due to them being full of high demand and low inventory. Data from the U.S. Census Bureau shows that the pace of new housing starts increased by 11% in February. Builders are continuing to construct new houses based on the assumption that the demand for new homes will stay strong. 
Prospective home buyers should be glad to know that mortgage rates are also trending downwards, even as the market continues to experience inflation. The Supreme Court is now allowing state officials in Texas to begin enforcing a controversial immigration law. The law, known as SB4, is allowing the arrest and detainment of people suspected of entering the state illegally. Lower federal courts are considering the appeal after the Supreme Court's decision on Tuesday due to racial profiling issues with the law. This is especially a problem in the state due to 40% of the population being Latino. This decision by the Supreme Court is not a precedent-setting case decision. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals heard oral arguments against the law on Wednesday morning and will continue to listen to challenges to the law in upcoming days. Up next, SpaceX has announced it's going to launch a Starship rocket in early May. And we'll have Nicholas McKinley come to talk more about the upcoming Mr. EU event. We'll hear more about that when we get back from this break. We can't see the help that's all around us. Let 211 be your guiding light for mental health and other resources. Call 211 or visit 211.org. You're not going to get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff. Like making sure your kids are in the right seats for their age and size. Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. What a disaster. <laughs> You're a disaster. This is a disaster. You can't be ready for every little disaster, but you can prepare for a big one. Make an emergency plan today. My biggest fear in the middle of my addiction was that I would never be able to get over it and that my kids wouldn't have a father. I started thinking, you know what? This isn't my story. For the longest time, fear held me back from ultimately being who I wanted to. I had to become a better man to be a better father. It's important to me that my kids are empowered and truly believe that if, if they can think it, they can do it. SpaceX announced plans to launch its Starship rocket pending approval from the Federal Aviation Administration again in early May. This will be the fourth test launch of the massive spacecraft. The third test took place just last Thursday. The Starship, also known as the most powerful rocket ever built, re-entered Earth's atmosphere after flying around in orbit for around 40 minutes. The engineer's focus for the next flight will be on perfecting the re-entry of the spacecraft, according to the company's chief operating officer. The team is hoping to learn whether or not a safe landing is possible. Lilia Parks is standing by with a special guest. Lilia? Thanks, Austin. Today we have Nicholas McKinley here to talk about the upcoming Mr. EU event at Evangel University. Thanks for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. So what is Mr. EU? What's this event? So Mr. EU is the newest event from Activities Board. It is a show slash pageant that allows the men on campus to show off their talent and creativity for the whole campus to watch. It's really fun, audience loves it, and it's one of the Evangel's greatest traditions here on campus. It sounds really fun. So where is this event going to be held? So this event will be at Spence Chapel, which is just where they have the mandatory chapels Wednesdays and Fridays. Right. Um, so within the, the Mr. EU event, you said that it's kind of like a pageant. So mm -hmm. what events will the candidates be partaking in? So some of the events include a formal section, so they'll just walk out in nice suits or whatever nice clothing they have while uh, the hosts introduce them. Uh, there will be a question section where they answer some questions, some funny, some serious. There will be a wild card section, which that could be anything. Uh, the contestants don't know, the judges don't know, only a few people know. So that'll be exciting to see when they handle that surprise. But probably the best uh, part of the show will be the talent portion. That's where the contestants get to show off their skill and their stuff. And it's honestly one of the funnest parts. Um, talents will range from music to comedy. So it's just, it's a lot of fun. And they've got some exciting stuff planned for you. So yeah, it sounds like a very widespread event. Mm -hmm. It feels like there's a lot of opportunities to kind of do it your own way. Yes, absolutely. Um, so who's going to be a part of this event? 
So it's being run by Activities Board, but some notable names. Uh, the show will be hosted by Toy Reisner and Isaiah Holgerson, a student body president. Uh, judges, we've got some great people ranging from professors to staff to just notable students, so that'll be fun. And then the stars of the show will be the contestants. We've got Owen Akins, Aiden Richardson, who's returning from last year. Uh, we've got Richard Swanson, Gannon Brigg, uh, Tristan Wheeler. DJ Thomas and Stone Peterson. So we've got some great men who are gonna just knock the socks off the audience. So it's gonna be fun. For sure. So as a part of AB Nick, what's your role in this event? My event is I work with my team, my wonderful team, uh, just to make sure that we're getting details figured out, making sure we got the contestants with Mr. EU interviews, uh, booking the judges, booking the hosts, figuring out what questions we wanna ask, what games we wanna play. Uh, just all that stuff, just coordinating all the details that have to make this show happen uh, for the audience to enjoy, so. For sure. So kind of looking at the contestants, how are they able to be part of this? So how, what was that um, application process like? So yeah, they won, they signed up application just so we could get to know a little bit about them. And then they signed up for a slot for an interview. So then the contestants came in one by one and me and my team, we interviewed them, asked them how they did in front of audiences and what talents they would potentially have. Just kind of see whether they were gonna be fit to be on the show and just entertain the audience. And I think we all got some great, some great people, so. Yeah. yeah, looking forward to see what they can bring to the table. Mm -hmm. What has been your specific favorite part about planning this event? Um, just being able to uh, throw a show for all the campus to enjoy. Just, you know, putting, you know, coordinating technology, stuff like that. Kind of like what you do with Spring Fling, just putting on a big production for all of campus to enjoy. And then just coordinating with people, with the contestants, with the judges, being able to work with people and make this great vision happen, so. Of course, so you've talked about a lot of reaching out to the contestants, kind of figuring out what they're going to do at this specific event. Is there one thing that you're looking the most forward to? Man, just, just what the talent portion is gonna have to offer, honestly, you know, we've just, They've got some great creative ideas. It's just wonderful. So, and I think the audience is going to enjoy them. I know I will. I'll be sitting there laughing while it's all going on. So, for yeah. sure. Um, how can we watch this event, or how can we get tickets to this event? So again, it's at Spence Chapel from eight to ten. And about tickets, it's free admission. So you can just come as you are. You don't have to pay any money. You can just come, enjoy the show. All that we ask is that when you show up to the chapel, you'll just scan in a little QR code to let you know that. Uh, you were there so we can count you so that's all you got to do yeah i'm really looking forward to this event it looks like there's a lot of cool opportunities for each contestant to kind of showcase their individual talents absolutely well thank you so much for being here nicholas it was great to learn more about the details of the mr eu event uh, let's go back to the desk with aubrey and austin thanks lilia so aubrey what's the weather looking like for the rest of the week it's going to be pretty nice as spring comes in, but there might be a little bit of precipitation. We'll look at that more in my full forecast. When times get dark, we can't see the help that's all around us. Let 211 be your guiding light for help with food, health care, and other resources. 211, how can I help you? Call 211 or visit 211.org. 211, get connected, get help. You're not gonna get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff, like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at nhtsa.gov slash the right seat.
First night here, but Amy seems cool. <laughs> Leading down to the river. <laughs> I am blind, but I need not see. What do you think? I know this road mm -hmm. is there for me. If I'm really free, take me down to the river and the world's ocean surface temperatures have broken records every day for more than a year. That's according to data from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and Climate Reanalyzer. It's led scientists to sound the alarm about the impacts on marine life and extreme weather. High ocean temperatures can be catastrophic for coral. Australia's Great Barrier Reef is currently experiencing its seventh mass bleaching event, which happens when coral becomes stressed by atmospheric conditions and scientists have warned we're on the brink of a fourth global mass coral bleaching event. Ocean heat also sets the stage for more ferocious hurricanes and can fuel other extreme weather events, including scorching heat waves and intense precipitation. So Austin, it looks like the ocean heat's kind of rising. I wonder if the regular temperature would be rising as well. Yeah, Aubrey, what can you tell us about that? Well, it certainly will, because spring is taking a hold on our week. Let's take a look at it. Our current conditions are sunny and 47, with that wind rising to 13 miles an hour, moving southeast, and that humidity lower down to 50%. Our conditions for today on Thursday will be partly cloudy with a high of 66. For today's almanac, we can see a low of 46 and a high of 66, so those warmer temperatures will be moving in, and it will be nice today, so you could go outside, have a picnic, do all those things that spring welcomes you to do. For the record temperatures, we can see a low of 14 and a high of 88, so nowhere near those record temperatures, so it's going to stay nice and even throughout the day. For our satellite, you can see some of that precipitation moving further from the west and the south, moving closer towards our northern areas. But it doesn't look like it will completely hit Springfield, so it will be clear for today. So we can expect that there will not be any rain for today, but there will be closer to northern Arkansas. Now let's take a look at our radar. For our radar, we can see some more of that rain coming in. In more of our northern areas, we have more snow and heavy precipitation, such as Minnesota and Wisconsin, and as well as the Oklahoma area, we will have more rain. But as for our southern Springfield area in Missouri, there won't be any rain that we can see. It will continue to move, but we can expect it to miss. Maybe later this week, we can expect a few hours or so of precipitation, but as for today, we will be clear. For our high temperatures, we can also see that it's mostly even across the boards in the 60s. It's going to be a nice 66 in Springfield, 60 in Kansas City. It is going to be slightly lower in other areas, moving closer north and east. For example, Columbia and St. Louis are around a 49. But as for our Springfield area, it is going to stay in those high 60s. Our national forecast, we can see that northern snow and heavy precipitation that is happening in some of the northern states, but we can also um, notice that it is going to miss our Springfield area. For our six-day forecast, it's going to bring more of that sun. There is a slight dip here on Monday in the beginning of the week, and we can expect perhaps freezing temperatures with that 32. But other than the slight rain happening this week, it will be mostly sunny, 50s to 60s moving higher as the week progresses. That's it for Weather Watch today. I'm Aubrey. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Aubrey. It looks like we have some pretty nice weather up ahead. Maybe a few chilly days. Yeah, and across the upcoming week, it seems like the good and bad weather is really battling each other out right now. Yeah, for sure. And just around the corner, Titus Fifth will be here to give us the latest in sports. This and more when we return. Weather can strike anytime, anywhere, but there's a simple way to stay safe. Hey, Jim Cantori here. I stay safe in dangerous weather by planning ahead. You can stay safe too with a few easy steps. Build an inexpensive kit with supplies for your family's needs. Write down important information like phone numbers and medications. Always talk with your family and remember any pets in your planning. Be ready, be safe, 
Start your plan today at ready.gov slash plan. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! When times get dark, we can't see the help that's all around us. Let 211 be your guiding light for help with food, health care, and other resources. 211, how can I help you? Call 211 or visit 211.org. 211, get connected, get help. NBA stars are starting a podcast. LeBron James and J.J. Redick will be talking about all things basketball in their new show called Mind the Game. These legends plan on not having any sponsors or corporate partners in order for the podcast to be as organic as possible, but they will have the occasional guest speaker. Mind the Game episodes will air on Tuesday and be available on all podcast platforms and YouTube. You know, Lilia, as a big sports fan and a LeBron James fan, I'm very excited about the podcast. How about you? Yeah, I bet the podcast will be super interesting to listen to, bring a lot of insight from the game of basketball. Titus, what else is going on in the world of sports? Well, Evangel has four players receiving the NAIA Scholar Athletics in basketball. On the men's team, Josh Pritchett and Garrett DeVault earned the award, as well as Micah Clayton and Sarah Luambo for the Evangel women's team. These players are being honored for their academic hard work and ability to maintain a 3.5 GPA in a 4.0 grading system. In total, 887 students will be receiving the award from the NAIA. In other news, Evangel takes on the 11th seed Lewis and Clark College in the round of 16 tournament matchup. This will be the first time these two teams have ever competed against each other in, the pro in program history. Additionally, if Evangel wins, it will be the first time Evangel has advanced to the round of eight since 2001 to the 2002 season. The game will be in Kansas City this Thursday at 7 p.m. And for national news, ESPN signs a new deal with the college football playoffs to remain the sole media rights owner of an additional six years, costing them $7.8 billion. This deal will last until the 2031 to 2032 season. Their original deal allows them to remain the media rights owners till 2025 and 2026 season, and they will spend an additional $1.3 billion annually so that they can also maintain the rights of the extended playoffs. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Titus. You know, Lilia, that's very exciting about the Angel basketball team. Not only could they potentially, the men's basketball team, go to round eight, but also with all their grades and getting those awards. That's awesome. Yeah, it looks like we have a lot of incredible athletes at Evangel. Super excited to see what the rest of the season looks like. I completely agree. And when we get back, a new friend was found where it shouldn't be. And Aubrey's with us for one final look at the forecast. All of this when we return. Properly extinguished can cause a wildfire. Hey guys, it's smoky. It looks as if Smokey is going to use the drown, stir, drown, and feel technique. After the first drown, a good stir. Next, another drink. Next and finally, a close feel. Is it cool? cool? Okay. Yeah. Hey, Smokey, catch. Oh, my bad, Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you.
When I first saw Turtle, my heart was full. Not anything but lonely. We had this like deep connection, this heart connection. He just wants to be close to you and part of your life. Every day with Turtle is a perfect day. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. I think everything he does shows how much he loves us. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure, pure love. 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 A fisherman at a lake in northeast Tennessee caught a surprise at the end of his line when he pulled up a three to four foot long alligator. The Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency said their Union County Wildlife Officer Rick Roberts got a call from the angler on Monday describing the unusual catch at Norris Lake. When Roberts arrived, the angler had pinned the alligator to the ground behind its head and told Roberts he caught it on a swim bait. Alligators are not native to that part of Tennessee and are considered a class one wildlife species, which are those that are inherently dangerous to humans and may only be possessed by permitted exhibitors or commercial propagators. Matthew Cameron, regional communications coordinator for TWRA, said that the alligator was taken to Little Ponderosa Zoo and Rescue, an exotic animal rescue facility in Clinton, Tennessee. While the origin of the alligator is unclear, it is evident that it was being illegally held in captivity and possibly released into Norris Lake. Unfortunately, this zoo does not normally house alligators, so the operators are looking for a more permanent home for the alligator. You know, that's so crazy that there's just like an alligator in a lake in Tennessee. Yeah, that's wild. And I really love fishing, so like I can't even imagine like just pulling up an alligator. Like. And I wonder if it will be good fishing weather next week. Aubrey, what can you tell us about that? The temperatures are going to be fluctuating a little bit, but let's see if it will be ready for your fishing, Austin. The temperatures are going to move from the 50s and 60s the entire week with some rain coming in, but it will be nice. Spring is coming in and we can be prepared for those 60s. That's it that I have for this week. Back to you guys at the desk. Austin, it looks like we're going to have a week of nice weather coming up. Yeah, I completely agree. I might have to get some fishing done. Absolutely. Well, thanks, Aubrey. That's all for us today. I'm Austin Mickey. And I'm Lilia Parks. For more on EU TV and for the latest Evangel news, go to euvalormedia.com. This has been Newswatch Today.